All right, everybody, here's a short tutorial on how to use Verge 3D. And I'll assume you already downloaded it. So all you have to do is to activate it. Let's type in Verge 3D. There are other tutorials that show how to do it. Just make sure that you got this one checked. And then we're already ready to go. We can go to sneak peek and we already see our cube. So this is pretty simple. Um, the nice tool about Virtual 3D is the App Manager. So here are all the apps that you already created or that are already there. Let's go ahead and create a new app. It's called Tutorial. I'll create it. Already done. And if you want to look at it, right now it looks like that. So you got this kind of cube with some nice reflections. Now I want to change this one, so I'll open the Blender file. Let's delete the cube. Let's add Susanna, the monkey. I'll change the lighting a little bit. And I'll have a sneak peek, and you see her. We can also use some modifiers. So we'll go ahead, add a subsurface modifier. But she still looks the same, so at least in this version, you still have to activate this one. Always make sure that bake modifiers is activated. And let's make her smooth. So now she should look a little better. Okay. Now if I go back to the app manager and I'll have a look at this tutorial here still see the cube. That's because I have to export the whole thing to this format. And now it's also online. There she is. Okay, now to have some small animations, I'll activate the dope sheet. Let's put it here. And let's just go ahead and have a little bit of change in location. See that my screen keys are not displayed here. Let's make them a little bigger. Okay. Now I'll just move her a little bit to this position. And if I go to sneak peek now, this is what she's going to do. Okay, that's because here in the settings of object, we have auto start. If I deactivate it, it won't start, which is good for later things, but right now it's nice to see that it works. So we'll use the auto start again. Let's duplicate this keyframe. And let's have let's say this one, put it to 90 so that it goes back and forth. Now what we want to do is that Susanna starts moving when I push the button, when I just press here. So let's deactivate those. Let's make sure that we save it and that we export it again. Because only then it will work. Let's deactivate auto start again. Okay. And now we're ready to go. Let's go into puzzles. And now we can actually do something when we press on this one. So let's take an object and let's say I want to have, first of all, we go to selectors and we'll take Susanna. 
and we need to do this event. So when clicked, Susanna, we can do things like we can start an animation. There is only one animation, so I can put this in here and guess it should already work. There it is, back and forth. Back and forth because I set it on auto. I can also set it on once. Let's save it just to make sure that it's reloaded. F5 in this case. Let's play. And she goes back and forth. And that's it. So it's fairly simple. Now, the reason I also put her back is that I can also control the keyframes. So let's say when I click on the head, I don't want it to go all the way, but I just want to go it from keyframe 0 to 40. And it's again the animation of Susanna. So this one should work. It doesn't work, so let's reload it. Let's play it. Okay, so now it goes all the time, which is of course not what we want, but this is what happens at the beginning. Let's reload it. The problem is here. The repeat mode, or the loop mode is repeat. So we have to set it on once, Save it again, which is not really necessary, but what was really necessary is to export it again. And just press F5, make sure that you got it saved. And we'll press on her. And it only will go once. Now it would be nice if it would go back if I click again on Susanna. So I'll just copy that one put it here and let's say okay this was from 50 to I think it was 70 let's check 90 so from 50 to 90 now everybody probably already knows this of course will not work because it doesn't know which one of those two to use so it just uses the first one so of course here we need to do a little bit of let's say logic Okay, so we need a conditional statement, which you can find under logic. So if do else, if something is happening, then do this, else do something else. And the other thing we definitely need is a variable. I already created one and I called it Susanna. So we need this one and we need a little more of logic. So let's say if Susanna is and let's just take two numbers. Let's say if she is zero, let's put her to zero at the beginning. So set then to zero. We can copy and paste this one. Then do the one animation, and otherwise do the other animation. So play the animation from zero to 40, 50. Let's have a look. 40 and when finished Z Susanna to 1 so this is the other case else if it's not 0 play the animation of Susanna forgot to put it in here from 50 to 90 and set Susanna to zero. Okay, hope it works. Save it, restart, and it works in this direction, and it works in that direction. So, 
it's I think it's fairly simple. You can also program it, of course. That's also possible. But I think this is something that yeah, you can understand pretty simple. And you can do a lot of things with this. All you have to do is just put in some informa uh, some animation. You can also rotate it and then do a little bit of programming. You got a lot of control over the thing. I used it in one of my little interactive simulations, which is about the Lorentz force, if you remember it from school. So it's always the question which direction the swing goes. It can go in this or in the other direction. So first of all, I set up the scene. And if you just look at the swing, let's have just the swing, nothing else. I put it in this direction and I also put it in the other direction. So then I can use it. And here we have it. So now you see with the hand going this direction, depending of course on the way the currency flows and the magnetic field, it should move into this direction. I got some shape keys on that one and it works and it even works like let's say if the power is switched in the other direction then it also swings in the other direction. So this is a lot of things that you can do but of course this one was a little more complicated than the one I showed you. So if you look at the puzzles here a lot of work but in the end when it works it's of course very nice but it's the same concept it's nothing else than what I just showed to you okay have fun with it